All right, so we're faced with this assembly code here, minus this, these comments whenever you first disassemble the program. And so the first thing that happens here is we push EBP. Now, what does push EBP really mean and why are we pushing EBP? This, you're going to see this very, very often in several of the common calling conventions for x86 assembly. What's going on here is we are taking the base pointer, like I said right here, from the previous function. So the function which called main. Because we are, we are now in the main function. So the function which called main, which we did not control, by the way, that function had a base pointer. And that function probably had parameters and arguments and um, local variables. And the base pointer is always used in this calling convention and by convention to locate the function arguments and the local variables in any given function. And so, and it's also at the bottom of the stack frame, conceptually. So what that means is the address that's currently inside of the EBP register that we are pushing was the bottom of the calling functions stack pointer, or the calling functions stack frame. So now, since we're going to be we have to create a new stack frame for this new function that we're in called main. So we're going to have to change that. So we have to push it. We have to store this base pointer somewhere in order for us to modify the base pointer for this function. So that way, when we return from this function, we still have access to the previous calling functions base pointer so that we still have access to the previous calling functions um, arguments and local variables. Now, so we push that. So we put it onto the stack itself, which is kind of, it's actually kind of interesting because these two, this, the base pointer and the stack pointer are what tells us the address of the stack. And we're actually storing, so it's almost like a, a paradox. We're storing some of the actual addresses needed to maintain the stack on the stack itself. But that's just what we do, and it works out nicely. So we push the base pointer out of the stack. We then take the current stack pointer and move it into the base pointer register. So what does this mean? Why are we doing this? Um, so what this means is if the current stack pointer at this point, at the beginning of the main function, is actually the top of the stack of the calling of the previous function. So whatever function called main, at this point in time right here, we are actually, the, the stack pointer is pointing to the top of that previous function stack. Now, the top of the previous function stack is going to become the base pointer or the bottom of this function's stack. And so we're actually going to take that address and move it into EBP, which will now refer to this function's base pointer from this point forwards until we leave the function. So just to be clear, the previous base pointer refers to the bottom of the previous function's stack frame. We then store that on the stack, and then we move the top of the previous function stack into our base so that we now have a bottom of our stack frame. And now, what do we have to do now, right? We now have to set up our own stack pointer so that we can start moving that, that stack pointer up the stack as we place information and data on our new stack. So we've set up our base pointer, but we haven't set up our current function stack pointer yet. And that's what these two instructions are responsible for right here, okay? Now, this looks very cryptic and confusing. We're ending the stack pointer with F, 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 zero, or just F, zero. Um, that's what we're doing. And this has a very specific purpose. And unless you know that purpose, this is gonna be a very confusing instruction. What this, the purpose of this instruction is, to align the stack pointer and to do that it it makes the stack pointer divisible by 16 and of course something is divisible by 16 also 8 and 4 could go into that and of course this is all uh, these are all binary numbers or these are all numbers that have significance in binary as you've probably seen before, 64 megabytes, 128 megabytes, you know, 1024 megabytes, all that kind of stuff. So 
Now I'm gonna I'm gonna do a demonstration of this to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, we're gonna go into our scientific calculator and we're gonna take the number 153 and we're going to divide that by 16. Okay, it's not evenly divisible because we get 9.5625. Not evenly divisible by 16, right? Now we're gonna go to our programmer calculator and we're gonna go to hex and we're gonna and we're, we're going to go to decimal, actually, and we're going to enter the number 153, okay, again. Now, let's say we want to make the number 153. We want to turn it into a number which is divisible by 16 evenly. What we could do is we can go to hex. So the number 153 is actually the number 99 in hexadecimal. And what we could do is we could and it with F0. Now, look closely here because you need to notice something. Here we have F, 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 we have seven Fs at a zero. And the reason why is because the number that is in ESP is that many digits long. But if you have a two-digit number and you want to do the same thing, you would just, you just need an F at zero. So if you, let's say you wanted, you had a three or four-digit long number, then you would do th three Fs at a zero, okay, to perform this. So now, when I hit equals, look at what look what happens to our decimal number when I hit equals. We now have 144. Now let's go to our scientific calculator and let's see if 144 is evenly divisible by 16. And it is. It's 9. Now let's pick a different number. Let's say 199 divided by 16. It's not evenly divisible by 16. Let's go back to our programmer. Let's go 189. And then let's go to hex, and we will end it with F0 again. And what do we get? Decimal, we get 192. Now, some of you, if you've been programming for a while, you'll know 192 is evenly divisible by 16. But in case you don't know, I'm going to show you right here that 192 divided by 16 is, is evenly divisible. It's 12. Okay, so that's what we're doing here, and we're doing that for alignment purposes for the stack. So that's what that instruction does. It's very cool, and, and if you really want to understand it, you can look at the actual binary, which I really highly recommend that you do. So, so what is F0? Let me go back to hex. What is F0? It's 11110000. One, 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 zero, 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 zero. So all we're doing is when you add something, you're and, and, and you're adding it with zero, it's always going to be zero because the whole purpose of an add is it only it only sets bits where both numbers that you're operating on are set to one. So if I add one 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 zero 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 zero, if I go down to binary here and I do that and I add it with one zero one zero one 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 one, what do you think is going to happen? Pause the video. Take a guess. All right, here we go. Boom. So we cleared all those out because we are we are adding it with zero, which will always be zero. However, these are all left intact. So that's what's going on there. Now we're now moving to sub ESP twenty eight. So what's going on with sub ESP twenty eight? So what this does is this create space for all of our local variables to be stored on the stack because local variables are stored on the stack. So these variables are going to be stored on the stack. So we need space now. We need to move our stack pointer to create a gap in memory for all those variables to be stored. So the compiler goes through the code and it says, okay, we have all these different variables. There are all these different types. And for each of these types, we need X or N number of bytes. So let's add that up and let's we're going to uh, create a stack by moving the stack pointer up or by actually you're subtracting, but you're technically moving it up because the stack grows downwards. It sounds weird, but you're, you, we are technically moving the stack pointer up by a given amount of bytes that are needed to store all the local variables. And how can we prove that? Right? Um, so first I want to put a comment here. I'm going to say, um, create space on stack for local variables. Okay, now we're actually gonna we're gonna prove this right now. So we have let's look at our code. So this is a pointer, and on x86 a pointer is going to take up four bytes. 
Now, you may be wondering, you may be wondering why, if only we have four bytes, it just allocated uh, hex 20, which actually is, if you go here and you look up hex 20, we, we allocated 32 to that uh, when, when we subtract that stack pointer. So let's look at what happens to the rest of this function and that we will see exactly why it did that. So what happens down here, um, a good way to figure this out would be to, to click on ESP. So that way ESP is highlighted everywhere in IDA. And um, if we look closely here, you see some activity, but you don't see a whole lot. So basically we've placed a pointer to the structure on the stack, as you saw. And then we're, we're only kind of just referring to that, to that pointer. Uh, to the structure over and over again, which that's not going to be taking up any more than four bytes. And then here we moved, we put uh, a number into the stack in order to push it to malloc of how many bytes that we need to allocate. But again, this is not going to take up all those bytes. But then if you look down here, this is what's going on. It, what it did is it it arranged space on the stack in order to store several different pointers, which are all going to be pushed to um, printf eventually. So um, we're gonna go through this in the next video, exactly what's going on here. But you can see here that we have stack plus C, and then stack plus eight, stack plus four, and then we actually drop um, a pointer to a string or a char star in there as well. So if you add all that up, then this makes a lot more sense. Now, stay tuned on the next video to see the rest of what's going on here, and we're going to get into all the struct stuff.